Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be talking about anti-aliasing. Specifically, we're going to be getting into one of the most popular anti-aliasing techniques called multi-sample anti-aliasing, or MSAA. But first off, let's just talk about the basics. What is anti-aliasing? Why do we need it? And yeah, so let's dive in and let's get started. So, the problem of aliasing ultimately stems from the fact that there's a finite number of pixels in your screen. So if I was to draw, say, a triangle, it might come out looking like this, with these really awkward stair-stepping artifacts along the pixel edges. And the reason for this is, again, there's a finite number of pixels on your screen. You get this stair-stepping artifact because you've run out of pixels to represent the triangle edge. And, well, that's not good. The obvious solution to this is just, oh, get a higher resolution display, and then the problem won't be as obvious. But that's not really a solution. That just makes the problem, again, less obvious. So, ultimately, if you want to make ache the best usage of the pixels, you'll need a better way to just get rid of these triangle edges, make them smoother, make them look more like a smooth triangle edge. And that's the idea of anti-aliasing. I'd just like to say right now, though, anti-aliasing is not limited to triangle edges. That's just one of the places where it's most both most visually prominent and most thought of. So that's why I'm using that as an example. It can also occur in other places. It can occur within triangles, if you have some really poorly filtered textures, for instance. But, again. <laughs> now, one way you can solve it, again, is just render at a higher resolution, like this. Of course, you don't have the resolution to display it at a higher resolution than your display has, but, as you see, the triangle is less aliased if you could. So how can you get the triangle looking like this less alias version at this resolution? Well, the most basic way you can do that is to downsample, using either linear filtering or a more advanced filtering technique like cubic filtering or what have you. Just render at a higher resolution and then downsample to this resolution. And if you do that, that might get you a triangle that looks something like this. And, as you can see, that's a lot nicer than that really awkward stair-stepping artifact. And if you take a few steps back, it really does start looking like there's a sharp edge to the triangle, plus or minus a little bit of blurring. So, this is, in general, a pretty good solution to the problem. And this is a technique called super sample anti-aliasing. They call it the oldest trick in the book because <laughs> this has been around basically ever since the problem of aliasing has been around, and it works in just about any case you can imagine. The problem with super sample anti-aliasing, as I'm sure you can imagine, is performance. It's really expensive to render your whatever you're drawing at just huge, huge resolutions that super sample anti-aliasing requires. So, instead, what a lot of people use is this technique called multi-sample anti-aliasing. And, for the most part, this works exactly like super sample anti-aliasing. You start off by rendering a higher resolution version of the image, just like super sample anti-aliasing, and after you have that, you downsample it to whatever resolution you actually want to display at, using linear filtering or cubic filtering or whatever filtering you feel like, just like super sample anti-aliasing. The difference, however, is when you render the higher resolution version of the image, super sample anti-aliasing will actually create a really high resolution version of the image. It will do all the shading to figure out the exact pixel colors, and if you had a display that supported that resolution, you could 
just display whatever's in this high resolution for the image and get an accurate display of your scene or whatever you're rendering. In multi-sample anti-aliasing, however, you don't actually go through with calculating the pixel colors. You just keep a representation, basically you keep track of which pixels are covered by the triangle, and you don't figure out what color they are. And then, when you downsample, what you're actually downsampling is pixel coverage. So, based on the downsampling, you'll figure out, okay, this pixel is 25% covered by the triangle, for instance. And this pixel is, say, 50% covered by the triangle, for instance. And this pixel is 100% covered. And then, in the downsampled version, that is when you'll perform all your shading calculations and figuring out what the pixel color should be. Except, you'll multiply that final color by however much coverage was found in, well, your downsampling. So, if for the 50% covered pixel, this will get you, for instance, well, it will get you 50% of the color of whatever you know, whatever color that you're, you generate for your triangle. And, and, you know, so forth and so on. So, that's the way multi-sample anti-aliasing works. It's just... it's fundament Fundamentally, it's doing the same idea as super-sample anti-aliasing, but it's just sort of deferring the shading calculations into the downsampled version. And that saves a whole lot of performance, because that's really the big performance suck of super-sample anti-aliasing. That's not to say this is the cheapest technique in the world. You still need a huge amount, huge, huge data buffers to store which pixels are covered, you know, this huge depth buffer for all the subsamples and whatnot, and yeah, so you're still going to need a huge amount of memory, you're still going to have to deal with huge resolutions, it's just you're saving the shading calculation. So, yeah. And actually, multi-sample anti-aliasing does look exactly the same as super-sample anti-aliasing, partially because of this, in most situations. Not in every situation, but in most situations. The really big case where super-sample anti-aliasing works and multi-sample anti-aliasing doesn't is, a surprise, with shading. If you have some aliasing occurring because of your shading, whether it be because of specular highlights not quite looking perfect, or just whatever, just you're generating something with the shader that has aliasing in it, then that won't, and of course, that won't be solved by multi-sample anti-aliasing. Multi-sample anti-aliasing will still say, oh, that pixel has 100% coverage of geometry, and therefore everything's fine. So, yeah, multi-sample anti-aliasing is a little bit more limited than super-sample anti-aliasing, but it works, it's a lot faster, and it's nice. Now, the last thing I'd like to talk about before I go into how you actually implement this in a practical application is you'll often hear people talk about, oh, this is 4x multi-sample anti-aliasing, or 16x multi-sample anti-aliasing, or what have you. What does that thing mean? Let me put it this way. Let's say you're rendering to a 1280 by 720 display, so 720p HD. That has roughly a million pixels total. The, f the 4x is the multiple of that. S so I have a total of four times that many pixels that are used in the super sampled version of the image. So 4x super sample anti-aliasing renders to a 4 million pixel image internally, and downsamples that to your the 1 million pixels that 1280 by 720 has. And multi-sample anti-aliasing works similarly. It's just, you know, the differences I've already discussed. Multi-sample anti-aliasing saves the shading for the 1280 by 720 version of the image. And etc. etc. And just to show you some of the differences, here's what 2 times super sample anti-aliasing works. So, better, but still a little aliased. 4 times, a lot better. 8 times, better, but it's definitely... 
you're definitely not getting as much of a return anymore. And 16 times, you can barely tell the difference at this point. So yeah, and that's the way this all multi-sample anti-aliasing and super-sample anti-aliasing work. So now I'm going to show you how to implement multi-sample anti-aliasing in an actual 3D game engine. And you can download the code both before and after the multi-sample anti-aliasing code in the description. So, as for implementing multi-sample anti-aliasing, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is multi-sample anti-aliasing is supported by the graphics hardware. So all you really have to do is tell the GPU, hey, use the multi-sample anti-aliasing stuff. And it's, for the most part, going to just work. There's a few caveats with that, but for the most part, it works. The bad news is that the way you tell the graphics card to do that is very heavily platform dependent. You can tell the graphics card to do it with OpenGL for a frame buffer, but if you want anti-aliasing in your window, which is what you usually want, well, that depends on what you're using. In this case, I'm using SDL, so here's how to do it with SDL. The way you do it in other windowing systems, varies. So you'll have to look it up there. But in general, what you want to do is, you will, in SDL at least, you want to set an attribute, and there'll be an attribute for SDL, GL, multi-sample buffers. So this enables using multi-sample buffers, so I'm going to set it to 1. So basically, you know how I was talking about how you have this extra set of data for the higher resolution thing. That's what this is, the multi-sample buffer. It has that higher resolution representation for the depth buffer and for triangle coverage and all that stuff. I also need another line. This is going to be SDL underscore GL multi-samples. Samples. So this is where you set, say, four times multi-sample anti-aliasing would be four, eight times multi-sample anti-aliasing would be eight, and so forth and so on. I'm going to set it to 4, and there. So now we've both created a buffer for the graphics card to use multi-sample anti-aliasing with, and we've told it how many samples to use. The final thing we have to do is in renderingengine.cpp, all we have to do now is say gl enable gl multi-sample. And now we'll be using multi-sample anti-aliasing if I build and run, as long as we're rendering into the window at least. So now if I build and run, look at that. The edge of the plane is now smoothly anti-aliased with, well, four times multi-sample anti-aliasing. So yeah, and it really is that simple, usually. There unfortunately is a caveat with this. Multi-sample anti-aliasing is only going to work out of the box like this with a forward renderer. If you're using deferred rendering or some other technique like that, then it's not... I mean, it'll work in the sense that using linear filtering on a basic shadow map works, but it's not going to do what you want. So... This technique, it's good in general, but it's not universally applicable. Second thing, as I was talking about earlier, is the performance cost of this, well, let's just say it's not free. In typical usage th scenarios, in your typical 3D game, simply enabling multi-sample anti-aliasing is going to increase your performance cost usually by about 25%. That, again, that can vary, but that's usually a good estimate. So, simply by enabling this, you've made your program 25% slower. And for some people, that's just not worth having smoother polygon edges. So we got something that works. It works 
pretty okay, but it's still fairly expensive. So in the next video, we're going to talk about some ways we can get cheaper anti-aliasing. And they're going to have their trade-offs, but they're going to be cheaper, and hopefully, if we do our job right, they'll also be applicable to some scenarios that multi-sample anti-aliasing is not. So, yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. No, there wasn't really that much to the code in this video, but yeah, it's really that simple because the graphics card, yeah, the graphics card supports it. So yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.